Welcome to today's webinar for, from Phrase, Introducing Phrase Portal. Again, you can join us on slido.com to answer or to ask any questions that you may have during the webinar. Now it's time to introduce our esteemed panelists today. We have Henry, Dan, and Francesca. Um, Henry is our senior product manager, Dan is product marketing manager, and Francesca is our localization director. All right, I'm gonna hand it over to Dan to walk us through the agenda. Thank you very much, uh, Kate, for that great introduction. So, uh, hi everyone, welcome to our webinar. Today, we will be introducing you all to the phrase portal. On our agenda today, we have a few different items with a few different speakers. We'll start off with a presentation about the technology that powers phrase portal, that is phrase language AI. After we go through this, uh, we'll pass the floor to Henry, who will introduce you to the phrase portal. We will, of course, show you a practical demo, not just one, but two, one from the perspective of a user and one from the perspective of a localization manager. Uh, we are very fortunate to have Francesca, our localization director, with us today because she will be presenting a localization manager's perspective, what the phrase portal means to her. We will then talk briefly about what's next for the Brave phrase portal before going to a live Q&A session, which will end today's webinar. Uh, at any point uh, during during the session, please do not hesitate to send any questions that you might have to us via Slido. You can simply go to slido.com and then add in a hashtag portal to get access to the Q&A interface. You can send those questions to us anytime. We'll try to answer as many of them as possible at the end of our session, but if we don't get to yours, we'll try to follow up after the webinar ends. So uh, let's get started. I want to present to you technology that powers Phrase Portal and a lot of our great uh, innovations throughout the whole Phrase platform, and that is Phrase Language AI. Now let's do a quick overview of what exactly Phrase Language AI is. Now Phrase Language AI is what we call our set of translation, quality assessment, and empty customization features, which are available throughout the Phrase platform. There are quite a few core components, which include firstly our fully managed engines. So Phrase partners with several leading MT providers to help give access to machine translation. Our partners include Amazon, DeepL, Microsoft, Google, Rosetta, Tencent, but we also include our very own internally developed uh, MT engine, Phrase Next MT. All of these MT engines are av available with a single click without any of the hassle of setup. Now, uh, having seven fully managed engines is great, but fortunately we have an AI-based feature that helps manage uh, manage uh, which ones are used for any given translation. That's empty auto-select. We also have features that help assess quality, such as phrase quality performance scores, uh, features like empty glossaries that help ensure that your terminology is always correct. We have support for full empty customization. And lastly, this whole interface is available by API. Let's take a bit of a deep dive into these features to get more of a sense of how they work and how they benefit you. So we'll start off with MT Auto Select. So as we mentioned, we have uh, the seven fully managed engines. We also provide our users with the ability to add in their own engines via API key. This includes both generic engines, but also customized, customized machine translation engines. So if you've trained your own engine for, uh, engine, for example, through Google AutoML, you can add it to the phrase language AI ecosystem via API. Now, having all of these engines is great, but usually you just want one translation. So how do you manage that? Well, we have the answer to that. It's called MT Auto Select. It's an AI-based algorithm that is able to recommend the best performing engine for any given translation. How does it work? Well, you create your own set of profiles where you choose the engines that you want to be considered for any given translation, and then our AI does the work. We automatically detected the domain of the document. So we are, for example, able to distinguish, distinguish whether or not we are translating a medical document or if we are translating a description of a hotel. And then we look back at past performance data to see what the best possible, the best possible engine is for that given translation, and then we deploy it. We found that uh, our users who only who only use one engine for all of their translations sacrifice quite a, a lot of quality because in about 70% of all of their projects, a better performing engine could have been used. Now we'll move on to the next feature, which is also AI-based. 
and also relates it to quality, this time measuring it. This is phrase QPS. QPS stands for Quality Performance Scores. And this is an AI feature we introduced last December. What QPS does is it gives you an instant sense of quality of your translations at the segment level. We use past, uh, past performance data together with the multidimensional quality metric to generate scores. Uh, this makes it easy for you to evaluate the quality of your translations immediately, allows you to set up dynamic workflows where you can skip post-editing for content that's good enough, and also helps your linguists um, speed, up, speed up translations. Uh, the next feature I'd like to briefly touch on is, of course, our own internally developed MT engine, Phrase Next MT. When we developed Phrase Next MT, we developed it with the intention for it to be a truly TMS-ready engine. We noticed that a lot of the users on the Phrase platform have amassed massive linguistic assets in the form of um, glossaries, in the form of translation memories, which a lot of engines are working with effectively. What Phrase Next MT does is it's able to work with your translation memories and adapt them to create better outputs. So rather than starting from scratch, it can look at TMs and then uh, basically fill in the gaps where appropriate. It also offers advanced glossary support and is fully customizable using our Phrase Custom AI platform. Um, one feature that I would like to briefly touch on also is MT glossaries, which we have on the next slide. Empty glossaries allow you to manage all of your brand specific terms in one place. So many engines support uh, glossary functionality, but usually you have to manage these separately with each provider. Now on the phrase platform, you can manage these all in one place. Um, the benefit of this is that uh, the correct use of empty glossaries can reduce a terminology error rate by up to 80%. Now this is a rather light form of customization. Fortunately, the Phrase platform also offers full customization, as we can see on the next slide. We've developed a platform called Phrase Custom AI, which allows you to seamlessly generate your own customized instances of Phrase Next MT. Uh, what you can do is take your translation memories directly out of the TMS, import them into Phrase Custom AI, where our AI-powered data cleaning filters will automatically clean them and make them suitable for MT customization. Then you can train your own instance of Phrase Next MT, which will perform better on those specific kinds of content that you trained it on. Um, Phrase Custom AI allows you to achieve unparalleled machine translation quality for your own specific use case. So as we can see, uh, Phrase Language AI has a lot of really powerful components that many of our users have been benefiting uh, from for a very long time. One of the questions that we've often get asked is, how can we extend these benefits outside of the TMS. Well, we've taken some steps to do that. If we go to the next slide, we can see that one of the things that we've done just last year is released API access. So many of the things that I've mentioned today are now accessible to our users via API. Um, now, unfortunately, API requires quite a lot of technical finesse in the same way that the TMS requires a lot of localization finesse, which can sometimes limit uh, the great value that uh, the phrase language AI solution can provide. Fortunately, fortunately, we are taking one more step to further extending uh, the ac uh, accessibility of this platform. And we are doing that with a brand new product, Phrase Portal. At this point, I would like to hand over to Henry, who will tell you a little bit more about what the portal is and how it can benefit you. Yeah, the floor, Henry. Thank you very much. Thanks for the great overview. Really awesome, Dan. Super exciting. Yeah, let's dive into so introducing Phrase Portal. So finally, finally, you or I can roll out machine translation capabilities in my whole organization while staying on top of quality and control, right? That's the message we want to convey here. How are we doing this? By providing you with a secure, customizable machine translation solution for your whole organization. And um, we're doing this for you. We're doing this for the localization managers. And on the next slide, I'm going to show you what pain points we want to address with that. So I really, really hope you find yourself with some of your company internal pain points here on the left-hand side. So this is what we learned from our customers already, that often the localization teams just have to reject localization requests because it's too expensive to cover this with human translation. Or they, you know, they might know or they might you know look away while knowing that some of the customers use Google Translate out there 
uh, to translate every now and then some content with the connected IP risk and with no control about the quality for the localization team, right? Um, another problem here is that you have to manage several third-party vendors. If you have some one solution for TMS, another one for machine translation, and maybe even a third fund for training engines. This all ends now, this all ends here. With our solution, you get safe, controllable localization access to a machine translation solution, which you can share with all your departments. And you can address content you previously have not localized because you now have machine translation, cheaper machine translation solution for it, while you can configure the optimal quality for each department individually uh, and stay on top of costs and quality at the same time. So we offer a single trusted vendor approach with us where we are GDPR compliant and ESO certified, um, which you can leverage and take a step further to roll out machine translation in your whole organization. We do this by allowing you basically to create custom portals. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a brief overview on the next slide before we finally come to the really exciting demo for it. All right, so the phrase portal allows you as an admin in the admin experience to have a dashboard and create separate portals for individual needs of individual departments. Let's say your legal team has some specific legal terms they want to translate, then you can make sure there are the right terms connected to it. Your marketing team, just like here at Phrase, we have Francesca, they have their very own requirements and we will learn about this in a second. So Phrase Portal provides you with the ability to create custom portals for your different departments and you can choose the quality. If you don't want to be bothered with that, no problem. AI Auto Select will kick in and give you the best quality out of seven leading market, uh, market leading translation engines. But you can take it a step further. And of course, you can leverage your glossaries. Um, you can put in an owned train engine using a custom AI. Uh, you can bring in your own engine from outside, no problem at all as well. You could leverage ChatGPT if you will. Um, and in the future, we'll also be able to pre-translate using translation memories. Um, so you can do all these things with Brace, Brace Portal. Um, and yeah, we'll come to the demo to show you how it's actually working out. Oh. Hi, everyone. We've talked a lot about the Phrase Portal, but nothing beats a nice demo. So let's take a look at it to see how an average user might experience the Phrase Portal. So we are presented with the overview of portals. I have one portal created here already specifically for this webinar. So let's take a look at the interface. When we open it up, we see that it's immediately recognizable. We have two boxes on the left-hand side, one for inputs, and on the right-hand side, one for outputs. We can choose which languages we are translating from on the left-hand side and which languages we are translating to on the right-hand side. So I'm quite happy to translate from English to Czech, my native language. Let's say I want to translate a short sentence. I can paste text here, or I can simply type it. And once the text has been provided, the translation is generated. All the translations are generated with the help of the fully managed engines, which are attached to this portal and which are then evaluated and selected using MT Auto Select. This ensures that the best possible engine is selected for any given translation. Uh, I'm quite happy with this translation, so I can simply copy it to my clipboard and paste it wherever it needs to be pasted to. Now, let's say I have slightly longer text. Of course, I can paste uh, text of up to 5,000 characters here, but I can also paste files. Uh, Phrase Portal supports a number of different file formats. So you can see four listed here and another nine listed here. Now I can use a file finder over here to upload my GIN file, or I can simply drag and drop. So before this webinar, I selected a test slide, which I want to translate it into Czech. Let's say I want to show this to my mom who doesn't speak English, but does speak Czech. 
So what I would do is simply drag and drop it here, confirm that I want this translated into Czech, and then the process goes quite smoothly. Once again, the MT Auto Select selects the best performing engine, generates a translation, and returns it back to me in the correct file format. So we can see my test webinar slides have returned to me. I download the file and can go back and take a look at the translation. As a Czech speaker, I can confirm that this is a very nice translation that I have no problem sharing with others. So this is it for a quick user demo of the phrase portal. Very soon, we'll take a look at what's happening behind the scenes. Yeah, so that was a quick user demo, uh, but we won't stop there. We will instead uh, take a look at it from a slightly more sophisticated perspective, and that is the perspective of a localization manager. I'm happy to bring uh, into, into this webinar Francesca, who is our in-house localization director and wizard in all things localization. Francesca, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, thank you for organizing this session. Um, can, can we click on the next slide, please? Right. So what does portal mean for localization managers? Um, I was, I think it's a great idea. And I was very happy when, you know, the team approached me to share some ideas and think about some use cases. I think the very first benefit is that um, it takes some workload of your localization managers uh, plate uh, because it, it's some of the teams who need localization are going to be able to self-serve in a very simple way uh, that doesn't involve any technical use of your platform. Um, and as we also mentioned before, um, using the portal can help solve problems related to uh, to budget, for example, or tight deadlines, or uh, your team is based somewhere uh, in a different time zone and they don't have time to um, talk to the localization manager because they need something urgently. And um, the other obvious benefit is that these teams that are going to produce some localized assets without going through localization are going to be able to use your terminology that is um, translated and approved and um, your uh, translation memories or your customized engines uh, in a very easy way, uh, as we said, without any uh, major technical setup. Um, I think this is a great way to educate other teams that are not, are not localization teams about the value and complexity of localization. And um, because they very practically, they get to do localization and they get to see, um, for example, in this case of, of machine translation, what is what it, it's good for, what use cases, what problems it can solve, and what problems it cannot. As as Dan was saying uh, just just before, uh, you know, you can simply just try to to run machine translation on a document uh, that that you need just as a test in your own language, and you see the quality, and you're going to be able to make some some decisions uh, based on that, and maybe find budget for localization uh, if needed. Um, and it's it's definitely great for for the teams to for the non-localization teams to also play around with localization, understand what it means, um, and understand um, let's say what what the future of localization is. Um, and uh, circling back to sort of where we started from, uh, it it's very easy to set up. Uh, from a localization manager perspective, which we're very grateful for. Uh, you don't have to create profiles on your TMS and you don't have to use up licenses uh, that we know are precious. Um, if we want to move on to the next slide, I think it's the demo. Yeah, we're gonna show um, how the setup actually looks like. be a quick demo of how the setting up of a portal looks like uh, from a localization manager perspective. 
So this is the screen where you set up your portal. As you can see, I have already uh, created a few. Uh, I'm going to create a new one. So create and create new portal. You give your portal a name. Um, you can pick a different color for your item if you want. Uh, and here you enter a short description. In the description, I like to, for example, indicate what kind of assets are being used in the um, in the portal, um, what kind of NP engine, for example, you would want to use. And then in the resources, you select whether you you select which NP engine you want to use. So you can either pick NP Auto Select um, that um, is going to pick the best option among these. Engines that you see, or you can use a specific MP profile that you will have uh, prepared and trained before. Um, in this case, um, you can see that I have a few available uh, for the purpose of this demo. I'm going to create the custom AI uh, trained model that contains our um, translation menus, that is being trained with our translation menus, and also has. An MP glossary attached. Um, then we go to the quality section. You can choose whether to make the QPS scores available to the users or not. Um, in this um, in this case, I'm going to choose yes. And then you decide who needs to have access. Um, if you're setting up setting up a portal for um, your whole company, it's important that you select uh, TMS admins and all portal users. How do you add portal users? Uh, also very simple, you click here and you see that you have a sample file uh, available uh, to download and uh, to use to um, enter your, your users. So this is what the um, what the file looks like, as you can see, it's very simple. It's very uh, few information, uh, the few pieces of information that you have to enter. Um, it's mainly name, um, email, username, the and the role uh, you want your user to have, um, and then you make sure that it's uh, active. Okay, so you upload your file. Click on Upload Users, and that's basically it. You save your uh, portal that you have just created, and you will find it here. Um, after it's uh, saved, um, you go to Settings, and you will find the link uh, to share with your users. You will find it here. Click um, and, and share it with uh, whomever is also looking at it. And this is what, uh, what the portal looks like once you have set it up. Thank you. Right, so I hope the, the demo was useful. Um, I I was suffering while recording it, but it's really very easy to set up. Um, and I wanted to also talk about um, an example of a use case um, uh, that is applicable for, for the portal. And this is a very concrete example from our team. Uh, we have a very active um, APAC marketing team that is very interested in, in producing uh, good quality localization for their markets. And uh, at the moment, we have, um, I would say, it's a regular uh, localization process where the APAC team sends me the files that need to be processed. Uh, the localization team creates the projects in TMS, and then we translate with our linguists uh, or we post edit depending on, on what uh, has been decided for a certain project. Then we need to ask the APAC team to review in TMS 
So there we have all the changes and all the, um, you know, the important terminology saved. Then we export, we send the files to the APEC team, and then they use the, the files or they use the assets. Um, with the portal, they are going to be able to uh, just drop the files, as we saw earlier, drop the files into the portal, get the files, and use them, basically. Um, obviously, this is a very specific example uh, of small pieces of translations where maybe your translation memory is not leveraged a lot because uh, it's going to be very creative marketing pieces of um, of localization, but uh, I think it, it was a great example to show. And uh, obviously the, the APAC marketing team are going to have their specific portal uh, with a, a profile that is going to um, meet their needs in terms of terminology and, um, and customized engines. I think that was it on my end, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much for Francesca. Um, yeah. So uh, one question that that a lot of you might be asking right now after seeing the phrase portal in action is how can I get started? So the good news is that for many customers of the phrase platform, the phrase portal is already available as a part of their existing plan. If you are on the old pricing plan, then you can request a trial by contacting sales or your custom uh, or your customer success manager. If you are watching this uh, webinar and you are not currently a Phrase uh, customer, then you could request a trial for the Phrase platform as a whole, which includes access to Phrase portal. Uh, you can do this via our website, phrase.com, or scan the QR code over here. Um, one, uh, one thing I wanted to know at this point is that if you have any questions about anything, you can simply ask them via Slido by going to slido.com and then uh, entering hashtag portal. Once again, that's slido.com, hashtag portal. Great, now we can move on to the next slide where we can ask Henry uh, the big and important question, as great as the phrase portal is now, what's next for the phrase portal? What, what can our users look forward to? Thank you, Dan. Yes, there's a lot to come. So fortunately, we're not stopping there, but we continue to develop the portal. We've got a standing team around it. And fortunately, we will bring more benefits to the portal. So um, that starts to um, deliver an easier way to sign up. So we will allow for really large corporations single sign-on support. And uh, we will also give you the opportunity to see the consumption in those different portals, such that you can stay even better on top of costs uh, for the different portals you share. And as already uh, hinted in my presentation, we will also allow to pre-translate using translation memories, which would give you two benefits. One, something you already translated will not be translated again, which um, should save costs. Uh, plus, if you have good uh, language assets, it's also good in terms of quality. And last but not least, we'll work on extended file support and we'll add more file formats um, later across the coming uh, months. Um, and yeah, as already mentioned, please um, take the opportunity to have a trial. We will look forward to get back to you and give you um, uh, an introduction with in-depth insights on how to use the portal best for your use cases. And of course, also to get your feedback, because as mentioned, we have a sending team and we are actually in a position to incorporate your feedback into our roadmap. So we look very much forward to hear from you. Back to Dan. Wonderful. Exciting things coming for the Phrase portal, but also exciting things coming for all fans of Phrase webinars. Uh, if you've enjoyed this webinar so far and you want more Phrase webinars, there's good news. We have one planned for April 25th on the topic of navigating the hype around hyper automation. This will be a conversation between our chief product officer, Simone Bonnenberger Rich, and CSA's Dr. Arla Lomel. It's shaping up to be a very exciting webinar. So if you don't want to miss that, uh, be sure to register for it on our website, phrase.com. So with that, we can move to our live Q&A session where we can answer some of the questions that you've sent our way. Now, uh, by the look of it, we've only received one question so far. So that either indicates that we're having a perfectly clear and faultless webinar or some technical difficulties. Uh, 
But if you would like to add your questions of your own, you can do that on slido.com by entering hashtag portal. So I think very soon we will be we will be looking into live Q and A. Um, great. Uh, so we have a first question from Alice. Uh, is it possible to add glossaries and share them with the whole organization slash some departments via the portal to make sure the terminology remains consistent when machine translation is used? So I think a question for Henry, what is the situation with glossary support? Yes, thank you. Yeah, that's exactly part of the idea of sharing a specific portal. So you can make sure that for each department, the exactly right glossary is behind the portal you share. That can be one, that can be several. And of course, it should be different ones for different uh, departments. So yes, Portal gives you exactly that capability. Right, so so you can have uh, glossaries that you can apply to all portals or you can have even portal specific glossaries, right? Exactly. Great. Um, so we have the next question from Emma. Uh, I like the idea of leveraging our own content with machine translation. Must all RTMs be phrased? Is it possible to integrate with, for example, memoq slash trados, or is it possible to import a TMX or TMB file? So uh, I think a question again for you, Henry, what is the status with our translation memories? I think it will be possible to also import some. For now, you have to use our translation memories, but it is possible to enrich them and then configure them for machine translation. That's that's the situation at the moment. Great. So we have a question from uh, Daniel. Uh, is there a way to monitor usage slash analytics? So I think this was briefly touched on in uh, what's next for the phrase portal, right? Exactly. That's coming very soon. So you will be able to see the MTU consumption for the whole uh, phrase language AI, starting with the individual portals, such that you can also you know, see, okay, legal team use this amount, marketing team use that amount, and we're not going to stop there. We will extend it that you can also see MTU consumption from TMS and also API in, in the same uh, place. So you have the, the full view uh, of how your MTU budget is spent. Perfect. Uh, if there are any more questions, please send them send them our way. Uh, in the meantime, maybe I can freestyle some some questions of my own just to follow up on some of the things that were mentioned today. Um, watching the the presentation, I feel like maybe we um, we should have uh, renamed this as the phrase portals because, of course, uh, you are not limited just to the one but to various different portals with various different profiles and linguistic assets attached to them. So I guess my general question for you, Francesca and Henry, is what kind of potential use cases, what kind of potential portals could our customers be using? Should I take this one, Henry? Go for it. Yes. So as, as we mentioned, uh, marketing is a great use case, sales. Uh, they often need um, localized assets very quickly, and maybe they don't have time or they haven't um, reserved some budget for localization. Um, legal teams as well. Uh, and I think whoever in the company, whoever might need uh, translations, uh, especially for internal purposes, um, in case uh, you know some some company internal assets are produced in a different language. Um, I think it's uh, it's it's very useful to have a common tool. Great. Um, so we have some more questions coming in. One uh, one more from Emma. If you simply give, for example, the APAC marketing team the ability to localize by themselves, who checks the quality? What workflows do you envisage? That's a very good, very good question. And uh, fortunately, I think we do have an answer for that, don't we, Henry? Yes, we do. So we have the phrase quality performance score for now on the document level, not yet for text. It's coming. Uh, so when you set up the portal, you can first and foremost check whether you've got the quality right and you've got the right glossary touch. So you can do some test translations and check the output and assess the quality by looking at the score for the particular document. We also have some bucketing that makes it easier for you to understand what a certain score means. So you will know 
uh, there's information that shows you this is actually a very good score or it's rather mediocre uh, with a link to uh, a nice demo video on how to use the QPS. Um, and you can choose actually in the configuration options of the portal, whether you want to allow in, in your case, the APEC marketing team to see the QPS themselves. Um, so that would enable them to check the quality as well, but this is up to you to choose. In any case, we, we are ensuring that you as localization team or localization manager, you keep the control of, of the quality. Yes, maybe to illustrate it with a practical example, uh, if you remember my demo where I was showing that I was translating my slides, uh, had I enabled the option to show QPS scores for, for um, that particular portal, I would have also received a QPS score from zero to 100 telling me how good or how poor uh, that translation is. Uh, if the score is low, then, then obviously I would probably go and ask Francesca uh, if this if this slide that can go through the normal localization processes. Um, great, so thanks for the great question, Emma. Uh, we have one from Ketty. Uh, thanks for the presentation, you're welcome. Uh, is there a usage or a license limit? So first and foremost, the, the portal is um, usage-based. So the idea is that you use your MTU budget. Um, you have a certain MTU budget, uh, that, that's a subject of negotiation, but in general, you can, you can continue using it uh, for now and not implementing any hard limits. Um, of course, if you exceed your budget, probably you will, will be kindly get contacted by our account manager to ask you to, to buy another package. Um, yeah. Great. Uh, we have a question from Blanca. What's the technology on your current phrase next MT? Now there is a very sophisticated technical answer to this that could be provided by one of our AI developers. Unfortunately, I'm not one of our AI developers, so I can give you a general answer here. Phrase next MT is our own internally developed machine translation engine using our own proprietary technology. It is not simply us uh, white labeling existing uh, MT technology developed by another company. This is our own uh, product. Uh, it is available in both a generic variant, uh, which is available as one of the fully managed engines, but also supports full customization using our custom AI platform. So I hope this uh, answers your question. Um, so unless there are some more, some more questions uh, that come in uh, now, I think we can maybe call it, oh no, we have, one more question that's just come in uh, from Sandeya. Uh, how does phrase portal differ from language AI? Um, yeah, so I think maybe one for, for you, Henry. Yeah, happy to take this. So portal is basically the face, the gate to phrase language AI. And that's another great advantage. So now you can actually see all the power, all the configuration options you have with phrase language AI in the portal. And you don't have to use TMS at all if you just want to do machine translation. So this is way more streamlined. It's cheaper and faster than using machine translation via TMS. That's one advantage. And the other thing we haven't mentioned in the demo, uh, but it's maybe worth pointing out is that everything you configure in the portal, every portal you configure, every machine translation profile you configure with the right glossary, uh, with the right set of engines, with AI auto select on top, you can then also use it scale via our API. So it gives you also kind of experimentation uh, space to configure it just the way um, your department or your company needs it. And then you can even use it at scale using the, uh, the API. I hope that helps. Great. Um, so we have a question, another question from uh, Emma. Uh, I think this this relates back to her earlier question where she was asking us about what quality checks we have in place. Um, uh, so she writes, I know you were going to answer with uh, QPS, uh, but if the people in the destination team aren't linguists, isn't the machine marking its own homework? Isn't it risky to allow lay people to assume there can't be a critical error if the score is high enough? Uh, for example, a 100% TM match still needs uh, still needs review. So I can give a general question. I don't know if Francesca and, and Henry will want to add something to this. But um, in general, as with all products, uh, we we think it's best for our users to exercise their own best judgment about what 
uh, what is suitable to be translated without sophisticated review. QPS provides a good overall guidance. Um, it, can, it can provide a pulse check. If something is clearly not a good translation, it should let our users know. But there can be situations where some critical errors can uh, could crop up. And for that, of course, we support a range of, uh, we um, enable our users to have sophisticated workflows through products like RTMS, where there are more security checks uh, in place to make sure that these critical errors don't, don't affect critical content. I don't know, Henry or Francesca, if there's anything more you'd add. Um, I can add something. Uh, it's more or less in the lines of what you just said about exercising your your best judgment. Um, in our particular case with the APEC team, they are they are the gatekeepers of the quality. So they know way they know better than linguists and they know better than the machine for sure. So they are like the the perfect uh, use case because they uh, are fully capable of judging what the, what the machine is uh, providing. Perfect. And, uh, oh, sorry, Henry. Yeah, just to add on what Dan was saying, it's another thing we're, we're, which is under consideration on our roadmap that we allow the output to be sent to TMS so in, in the case that Sometimes maybe if the quality is not superior, you can send it into the TMS workflow, all predefined and pre-configured, and then assign it for for uh, human IQA uh, if if you want to. Great. Um, so we have what I think is the last uh, question of our webinar today from Marta. Thank you for the presentation. Do all subscriptions of Phrase TMS have this new feature, or only if they have a Phrase language AI products? Um, so we talked a little bit about availability um, earlier in our slides, slide deck today. Uh, we also, I think, had a question related to this earlier in the Q&A. But in general, uh, the Phrase portal is available uh, to all existing uh, customers of the Phrase, um, Phrase platform who are on our new pricing plan. If there are some customers who are still on our old pricing plan, they can request a trial to check out this new new functionality. And if you are not currently a Phrase customer, you can request a trial of the Phrase platform, which includes Phrase portal access. So I think that is it for our live Q&A today. Uh, and that concludes our webinar. It was a real pleasure to, to have you all. Uh, and with that, I'm going to hand it back to Kate. Great. Thank you all so much. This was a really great discussion. I appreciate all of the effort that went into preparing this presentation and um, get hosting our Q&A. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We really appreciate you being here. If you have any more questions, um, you can get in touch with us uh, through our website or find us on LinkedIn, whatever works for you. We appreciate it and have a great day.